Recently me and my parents went for a little ride through our countryside. It basically meant going from here to there and I got a little inspired to make a civil model. Something more interesting. So I ordered this tiny 1 to 70 second scale tractor. It's a Zetor 25 agricultural version from Planet Models. It's in 1 to 70 second scale and it's a resin kit. Now one bonus that the resin has is that it it can get really really detailed in really tiny scales which is just really amazing I would say. You don't really need to clean up the parts and they just look amazingly sharp. But you do have to glue the model with super glue and the models are kind of expensive when they are made out of resin. Now. Getting the parts out of their sprues is another story, it's a lot harder than with one uh, plastic model. You see, the part is usually on a huge resin base and it's really hard to get it off without breaking anything. And it also requires a lot of cleanup, the part is just so firmly on its base that it, it gets really really flashy on the parts that were once attached to the base, so you should take a good care and try to clean them up as well as you can. Now building resin models is more or less the same as plastic models, but as I've said you need to use super glue. Now the best trick on how to use it is uh, putting it on some non-stick paper and then use use tooth toothpick to apply it onto the part. This way the super glue won't dry up, you won't have any problems with it being messy and you shouldn't have problem with it dripping on your table or something. On the other hand, hand, when you put your hand into it, it's a really big problem. I made a few modifications to the upper part, the engine cover, because the version in the kit has its exhaust running across the bottom, but I wanted one with a top exhaust like a typical tractor, so I scratch built it. It's, I didn't really record it, but that's okay because I'm a dunderhead and I dropped it anyway, so I had, had to change some stuff since a lot of it broke. As you can see, the model is really tiny. For painting, I use uh, acrylic colors from Vallejo. I don't use a primer because, as I've said, the model is really detailed but still really, really, really tiny. So it's hard not to cover the details up with paint. And I really didn't want to do that so the model looks better. So I didn't use a primer. I only to, uh, used normal color. I uh, lightened it up with uh, white and then I diluted it with water. I used several layers, around five I think for the sandy part and I painted almost the entire model with it. Mostly the lower part with, an en with the engine and the uh, hydraulics on the back was painted sandy. Now, my dad had this little tractor when he was younger and a lot of people on the countryside in Slovakia have this or a similar tractor, it's, it was really cheap, it was strong and it's just a historical vehicle in our country at this point. 
It was a first Zetor as well, and socialism really liked them for some reason. Now, that means if you ever decide to buy this model and paint it up, you can basically paint it any way you want. My dad said the most common color was uh, green, they were completely green, but I found pictures of them being completely green, but the bottoms were sandy, but the bottoms were grey, I found them in red color, I found them in blue color. Uh, you see, these tractors were really modified in their lifespan because the people just made them theirs, uh, I would say. So, you can more or less get away with most colors if you ever decide to build this model. Apart from, I guess, like purple or something. The green was also applied in coats of diluted paint so it builds up nicely and doesn't look bad. Now, this is one problem I have with Vallejo color, sp specifically green. It might be just me uh, putting too much water into it, but sometimes it just <clears throat> starts flowing downwards, I guess is the word. It's hard to explain. I painted the wheels with uh, German grey from Ravel, because I think that's the best color for, for tires. Now, as you can see, the model is really tiny, but with uh, using only la uh, small amounts of color and layering it up, you can achieve really smooth results. Now it's time for some chipping. Now, you could make this model really new, but these tractors were used heavily for a lot of years. I mean, the model itself, like the Zetor 25, was the very first Zetor and it was made in 1947, I believe. So I decided to make the model old and, you know, rusty, dusty, but still operational to give it some character and story. Which brings me to my plans. I, uh, while going through the countryside, I didn't get inspired for this model because I saw a tractor, but because I saw a tractor on our countryside. It's hard to explain, but I was thinking I could make some dioramas that would show Eastern Europe in this weird but still beautiful way. I also put brown in the middle of those chips to simulate the rust. Then I started applying the washes. I first went over the model with a dark brown wash from, again, Vallejo. I'm starting to see a pattern here. I diluted it wa with water and I uh, went over all of the details <laughs> with it so it picks them up nicely. Then I blended it with water as well, which is my favorite part of acrylic washes. I know some people prefer enamel washes because you can dilute them with thinners and stuff, but I don't really like the smell and uh, I don't know, I just prefer acrylic ones, so I used acrylic ones. Then I went over all of the rusty areas with a uh, rusty acrylic wash, again from uh, Vallejo, this was light rust. I basically dipped the, uh, dipped the brush in the paint, I put it over the rusty part, then I let it sit for a, sec for a while, short while, and then I blended the edges. <coughs> so the rust looks like it's just, you know, blended around but still rusty in the middle. I also applied a little bit on the lower hole because, you know, 
I wasn't totally happy with how it looked like, so I went over it with another layer of elastic color because. So yeah, now that our model is rusty, you can see I tried my best not to go overboard, but now is time to make it a bit dusty as well. First I uh, made a really light green color and I dry brushed it all over the green areas. I'm not sure why I did this, but the model felt a bit too uh, dark, so I decided to do this to make it a bit lighter, but it also kind of... Uh, <clears throat> took away the rusty effects Then I applied the dust I was thinking about heavy mud, but then I thought it's gonna be a diorama of the vehicle standing under a tree and stuff So I really decided not to instead. I went with only dust that I made from the same dust dusty color from Vallejo I diluted it to almost the wash or basically a wash and then I applied it all over the tractor. I also bl and then I of course blended it in. Now as I've said this is a first model in my I don't know there's gonna be maybe two more in like Eastern European models. I had this idea already in summer but couldn't re uh, realize it. But now that a group build started with Eastern European team, I pushed myself into building some of these models. So you can definitely expect some videos of them. I've also never made dioramas apart from one before, so I really really want to try making a diorama for this little tractor and the models that will come later. So this is a uh, first part in the series, uh, you can expect the models in course of next two months, a month, I not sh I'm not sure how quickly I will build them, but I really hope you're excited to see them, I mean I'm excited to build them, this is something that's close to my heart, and it's something different from, you know, the usual tanks I build. I really hope you're liking my video so far, I mean there's only like two of them that are actually good I'd say, but I'm trying to get better, I'm trying to make those these models for you so you can watch them and enjoy them. I hope I could have, I hope I helped you a little bit with deciding on what you will build next and I really hope you liked this Zetor as well. I mean, it's really tiny, really cute, you know how it is. So, thank you so much for watching. If you f feel like you want to see more, please don't hesitate and subscribe. Maybe even click the notification button so you're not... <coughs> so you don't miss out on the Zetter. And here is presentation of the final model. Enjoy!